Hi, it's Natasha. And Khalil. And we are the co-hosts of... Woken, Woken Free! Thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in to our 57th episode of Woken Free. If you've been tuning in every week for Woken Free Wednesday, you know that Woken Free is all about being real and honest with each other and you. We talk about everything and anything that's important to us, to you, the world, and nothing is off the table. In this episode, we're talking with the founder of the Podcast Brunch Club. And if you don't know what that is, you're in for a treat. But before we dive deep into the subject, we ask for you to consider and do the following things. First, have you subscribed to Woken Free on iTunes, TuneIn, Stitcher, Google Play, YouTube, SoundCloud, and iHeartRadio? If not, please do. We greatly appreciate your support of the show. Second, have you shared an episode with friends and family? If not, sharing is caring, guys. Share this episode. Next, have you hollered at us on social media? If not, you definitely should. You can reach us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Woken Free. And then lastly, have you reviewed our show on any of the platforms that we're on? And we're on plenty of platforms. So where are we? You go to WokenFree.com and you can pick your platform of choice and review our show. Each week, we like to share a little bit about us before we dive into the topic for the episode. Last week, we shared when arriving at a destination in a car, do you drive around for a couple minutes or do you take the first pot you see, even if it's far away? This week, we are sharing what's one food you thought you would hate but ended up loving? For me, that would be white broccoli, a.k.a. cauliflower. I thought I w it was going to be something that I'd be like, really? But actually, I like it, and it's delicious with cheese. It's delicious with lots of different things. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Mine is canned cranberry sauce because when I looked at it, it that thing looks crazy. But mm. I ended up eating it, and now I love it, like... That's the only type of cranberry sauce I can eat. And I don't like cranberry juice or mm -hmm. anything else. Well, cranberry vodka is okay. But I'm not a cranberry fan, but the canned cranberry sauce, for some reason, I like it. Yes, definitely. Crazy. That is a must every Thanksgiving. Yep. But before we digress more, let's get into talking about who is the founder of the Podcast Brunch Club. Adela Mizrachi is the founder of Podcast Brunch Club also known as PBC. PBC is like a book club, but for podcasts. It's a global community with over 50 local chapters across five continents. Every month, one of the PBC community members selects a theme and curates a list of three to five podcast episodes around that theme. Then people meet in groups all over the world to discuss. Adela is a curious human who's always looking for new ways to explore the world. She's traveled all over the world, filling her passport once and living in Ethiopia for a year. Her background is in international education, but now she works as a communication specialist. She describes herself as a jack of all trades, master of none, but always trying. Her passions include podcasts, obviously, real estate, and she and her fiance uh, flip houses and travel. What we do on our podcast is we like to do a personal share, and it might not relate to the topics that we talk about later yeah. on, but it's a mm -hmm. fun little question. This personal share is going to be, what's one food you thought you would hate, but ending up, ended up loving? Oh my gosh. If there's any. You stumped me. Yeah, you stumped me. <laughs> I, <laughs> I mean, I'm like a, I think some people would describe me as a picky eater. So like, I like what I like and I don't like what I don't like. So I don't even know that I would be the type of person who would try something that I originally didn't like. I'm just one of those people. Um, you know, honestly, like I didn't grow up eating a lot of shrimp. I grew up in the, the Midwest and, um, like, and we're actually Jewish. So like shrimp is not kosher and not that we kept kosher, but it's just one of those things that we just didn't have shrimp in the house. And then I discovered shrimp in college and I was like, okay, this is something I've been missing. So oh, okay. shrimp. yeah, <laughs> very good choice. Nice. Nice. Yes. All right. And so with that, I'd love for you to share with the Woken Free Nation. How did the podcast brunch club also known as PBC come to be? Yeah. So, um, so I was, sort of laid up for a while. I had had a surgery and was not in work and 
just trying to recover and I could not get my mind off of just like my own physical limitations and podcasting was the only thing that I, like listening to podcasts was the only thing I could do that actually got my brain off of myself. I couldn't watch TV. I couldn't watch, um, or I couldn't read books. So podcasting became kind of like an outlet for me to just sort of escape a little bit. Mm. And while I was doing that, uh, like, and I was, I was recovering, a bunch of friends came over and we had one of those conversations that I'm sure podcast lovers out there all probably relate to. We started just sharing podcast recommendations. Oh my God, did you hear this podcast? Oh my God, I'm going to subscribe right now. You have to subscribe to this other podcast. And there was this amazing episode about blah, 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 you know, like one of those conversations. And that's when it sort of hit me. It was like, oh yeah, this, this needs to be a thing. This needs to be a thing we do regularly. And this is exactly why book club started because you read a book and you're by yourself and they're often compelling and there's often a lot to talk about, but because it's something that you do by yourself, it's not always, you know, conducive to talking about it. So that's why book club is there. So I was mm-hmm. like, yeah, podcast club needs to exist. And so I got some friends together for brunch and that's why it's podcast friends club. And then, um, and then we just put it out to the world. Like I just kind of put it out there just to see if people wanted to, you know, join us and, you know, start chapters in their cities. And I was like floored because we now have about f- over 50 chapters on five continents. Wow. wow. Incredible. Nice. Yeah. It's amazing. And when did this start? It started in, I want to say like spring of 2015. Nice. That's tremendous yeah. growth. Yeah. For the first year, I, I don't think even, it was just like the Chicago group was just getting together and meeting. And then after about a year, I was thinking, oh, yeah, maybe I'll see if other people want to do this. And I really thought it was only going to be, I thought what would happen is that people would come and say, yeah, I have a bunch of friends and we'd love to start one. And so they'd be little like groups of friends, you know, just getting together. I really had no idea that it was going to be people coming and saying to me, you know, I actually don't have a lot of friends that listen to podcasts and I want to talk about them. So, mm-hmm. and my friends are sick of me talking to them about it. So I really <laughs> need more podcast friends. So I'm willing to make it public because I really just never, I didn't think that that was how it was going to go. And it did. I mean, all of, most of our chapters are public. We have a couple of friend groups that just do it privately. But yeah, most of them are public. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what attracted you to the podcast world? I mean, so for me, it was like the storytelling side of podcasting. And then the other part that I really am drawn to is like the the learning part. Like I get to learn a lot about subjects that I would never have known about. Um, I'm a terribly slow reader. So reading about topics is just, and my mind just wanders for some reason audio it just keeps me captivated i can focus Mm -hmm. on it but i don't also feel like reading and like for example reading and like watching tv or something those two things are very singular activities like i can't there's not a whole lot of multitasking you can do while you're reading right like you're not going to be reading and driving or reading and washing (laughs) the dishes or like you know whatever you know you're or like tv is the same way right i mean you could have i guess reading and cooking if you have a tv in your in your kitchen and whatever but for the most part it's just like you sitting still and watching the television you can't really do a whole lot of other things so Mm -hmm. the things that i love about podcasts podcasts are just like the ability to multitask like i don't feel like it's a waste of my time because I am doing other things that I know I have to do and I don't feel, you know, I don't feel stressed about it. Oh, I shouldn't mm-hmm. be sitting here watching TV because I should be doing my laundry or whatever. So mm-hmm. yeah, for me, that's what it's about. But, but the podcast club concept is like, it's, I think what has drawn me to the podcast club thing is the fact that I feel like nowadays and I sound like such an old person when I say it that way but um (laughs) like it's everybody's just hiding behind their computers or their phones and they've you know we're all walking me included I'm walking around with my earbuds in all the time and I'm not really interacting with people face to face Mm -hmm. and it's harder to do that and as we all know as adults it's harder to make friends 
And so mm-hmm. this has become something that I feel like is bigger than just podcasts. It's a bit more about making connections with people and talking to your neighbors face to face about things you probably wouldn't talk to them about otherwise. You know, sometimes we have themes that are like pretty heavy, like the death penalty. And sometimes we have themes like this month is ocean conservation. And, mm-hmm. you know, you learn something, you get to talk to people about it. Uh, you get their perspective and you just put your phone away for a couple hours a month and actually have a conversation with people. So for me, mm-hmm. that's what is m- most amazing about it. It's just the, I feel like we need more opportunities to have real conversations and dialogue and they don't have to always, you know, we're, you know, we talk about that a lot in sort of the political realm. Like we have to have these political discussions and I think that is true, but like it's scary for a lot of people. I feel like this is a less scary part about like actually having an authentic interaction with a person, you know? Absolutely. Now, when it comes to podcasts, these are not, this isn't like a new era, but somehow we seem to be in kind of a nice golden age of where everyone is starting a podcast and they're so Mm -hmm. hot and, and, you know, are you a podcaster? And it's, it's kind of like the next wave of like influencerism as I, as I kind of like think of it. So what do you think was the shift in our society or in technology that has now made podcasts so hot, even though they've been around for quite a bit, like quite a long yeah. time now? God, that's a really good question. I mean, it feels like everything, you know, seemed to sort of pivot around when Serial came out, right? Like the first mm-hmm. season of Serial was mm-hmm. when it really kind of turned into a mass you know, mass, I guess, community of listeners, you know, so it became more mainstream, I think, right around the time Serial came out, and I don't know, I mean, it definitely has something to do with Serial, but I also think that it probably was just the perfect storm in some ways, um, where, you know, it was, blogs have been around for a a long time and had been popular and everybody and their mother had a blog and then it was like YouTube, right? And then now everybody and their mother has a YouTube channel. And Mm -hmm. I feel like it's just like the next wave of, Mm -hmm. you know, this is, it's audio and there is a bit of an element of, um, I don't know. Like, I really think that there's something about the human voice that just stops me dead in my tracks. And, the the fact that you don't actually also see the person and you have to mm-hmm. use your own imagination to like imagine who you're who's talking to because you don't know what they look like mm-hmm. it you know I actually heard a whole I went to podcast movement a couple of years ago which is a big podcast conference and Alex Bloomberg who's the CEO of Gimlet Media another big podcast company was there and he did a whole speech about why are podcasts so compelling like what is it about audio that is like really compelling and he his argument was it's just a perfect amount of you you get the story told to you but also you have to invest your own brain power because you're imagining like the the person and the situation it's not like tv where all of the audio and the visual is just there for you to consume and then it's not reading where it's like the audio and the visual is like you have to imagine all of it right whereas Mm -hmm. like podcasting is that like happy medium where the audio is provided to you and then you have to sort of imagine the visual Mm -hmm. and so like that investment of your own imagination and your own brain power sort of creates this um this link between you and the person that's telling that story that makes you sort of on their side. I don't know. I thought it was an interesting argument and I tend, I don't know, I tend to agree. It's interesting because I would say us as podcasters, uh, because I'm very much in media in my in my business outside of Woken Free, like I try for us to even have public things. So I feel like if you know Woken Free, then you know our faces are with it. So that's an interesting argument to say that like people are intrigued by just like the audio and don't necessarily get a chance to like get to know the yeah. podcasters on a that, visual basis. But I feel like that's changing well, too though now. Yeah. I mean, I'm, so I I'm thinking about it from like a storytelling perspective, like a lot of mm-hmm. the storytelling podcasts that are out there, they're not necessarily, or even when somebody's listening to this Woken Free episode, they might know what you look like, but they don't know what I look like, you know? And so uh, I see what you're, you're saying. Yeah. yeah. So you're interviewing or you're telling the story of somebody else. 
Mm -hmm. right? And so they may be connected to you, and that is absolutely certainly true because they wouldn't they, they wouldn't subscribe if they weren't you know somehow connected to you. But also mm -hmm. probably hearing potentially hearing my voice and what I have to say, and um, it's sort of and also just getting that vetting, right? Like that I'm coming here because you've invited me. Mm -hmm. and they mm -hmm. trust you you know there's like that connection that people might feel that maybe they wouldn't feel if I was just like being interviewed on a news segment gotcha okay what are the podcasts you listen to and why do you listen to those particular podcasts oh gosh I have so many I listen to uh <laughs> so that's the hard one to answer I mean I listen to all the normal like the you know the big ones like this American I like a lot of the storytelling podcasts with this American life um, mm -hmm. I love, um, Gimlet's Heavyweight, which is mm -hmm. an amazing, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of it, but it's, uh -huh. um, have you heard of it? No, we haven't. Oh, no. Okay. So he, the, the host, Jonathan is like, he basically goes on these, I don't even know what, he tries to fix people's past. So, like, the first episode is probably a best example. Like, he did his own dad. His dad had a terrible relationship with his own brother. So his dad and his uncle just, like, didn't talk. And so, like, Jonathan came in and he talked to his dad about, like, what, what are the issues? You know, what it is, is it? And then he tried, he tried to, like, kind of go back in time and figure out what happened and then fix the situation. So it's this weird, like, it sounds so bad when I explain it, but... It's really good. It's like I'm definitely not doing it justice. I'm so well, sorry. Are Jonathan. you saying and... like the person he's he's like trying to break like current day trauma through an, a greater yeah. understanding of of past, you know, difficulties yeah. and That's... challenges? Okay. You did a much better job at explaining it, and you've never listened. So like I should probably <laughs> just let you do the explaining. <laughs> I mean, it definitely sounds fascinating. I'm definitely going to check it out. Okay, very cool. It's really good. Actually, the one that you should probably listen to is the one, um, oh, God, I'm going to forget what the name of it was, but it actually was about Moby, the artist, you know, the mm. musical artist. Yeah. Um, where it's really good. And he actually oh, gets Moby on his podcast, so. That's really yeah. dope. Yeah, that's really wow, awesome. Nice. Okay. <laughs> yeah. What would you so say? This is one of my favorites, yeah. Gotcha. What would you say are the keys to a successful podcast since you have been consuming them and, and you're organizing, you know, through the podcast brunch club, uh, so many, uh, you know, giving attention and a platform for many, many podcasts. What, what do you say makes a successful podcast? Well, I mean, I think it, so first of all, I think that whoever's doing it should love doing it, right? Like, they should mm -hmm. never feel like it's a chore. It's it's work, you know? I mean, everybody and their mother probably does have a podcast now, but I also have a podcast. I am one of those people, but it is a lot of work. It's not it's not simple, right? It's it's even, it, I would say it's, art, it's harder than doing a blog, right? And, mm -hmm. and to invest that kind of time, you should really love it, right? So I think, and I think that comes through. To the audience whether or not it feels like a chore or something that you're really truly passionate about mm -hmm. i also think you know just being you and not worrying about you know just trying to be authentic and mm -hmm. not um trying to be somebody you're not you know fake it till you make it kind of thing just be <laughs> honest about you know what what's going on and you know oh you know whatever it is and have a passion for whatever the topic is. Like if your topic, I, I mean, I have heard of, um, so we do a podcast too around podcast brunch club and around the themes that we have every month. And, um, I always ask my guests like, okay, so let's go off on a podcast tangent. Tell me your favorite podcast or like, tell me a podcast that our listeners should be listening to. And somebody told me, was like, you know, I found this really obscure podcast and it's going to sound really goofy. But it's all about escalators. Like, it's, 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 I mean, it's escalators, right? And he was like, I really didn't think I was going to like it. And he's actually a really well-known reporter on Planet Money. You oh, know, wow. like, he's an NPR reporter. And he was wow. like, I just found this random podcast about escalators, and it's actually really interesting. So I, mean, I can't. This, That's so yeah, funny. this woman who, like, does a podcast about escalators is just like, I really want, I really am interested into escalators. 
Okay. That's Sounds so fascinating. Cool. Now, is she on an escalator when she's like recording her podcast, or is it a story <laughs> that takes place on escalator? Like, what, what, what is that about? Yeah. Okay, so I should. I, I need to be clear. I didn't actually listen. It was just a recommendation yeah. of a podcast, and I was like, I don't know if I'm there yet. Like, I don't know if I'm as intrigued <laughs> by escalators yeah. that I would devote any time to it. But from my understanding, it's about escalators it's just like it's not about it's not stories about that happened on escalators she's not recording escalators she's just like telling people about like the inner workings of the escalator or how the escalator was invented or the reactions to escalators when they first go into malls in china or whatever you know like there's probably a lot more i don't know to that That's... to it than, than that but yeah fascinating and yeah, yeah I, i'm not sure if i'm there that yeah there with you either yeah i i yeah uh, mm -mm. uh I, maybe but, if it was storytelling on escalators i might be there that might be interesting you want to yeah. find me. out the inner workings of escalators that to me sounds like how far yeah, they've the come since the beginning escalators like that sounds but god bless yeah, and, and, and god bless everyone who's tuning in that's awesome you know, right. always... I mean, to each their own. Like, there's a like, yeah. there's a niche for everybody, right? Definitely. Most. I mean, you just said it. Yeah. I mean, now if someone's like, I don't know what to talk about, I now can say, Have you thought about escalators? I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean I've thought about them, now. You know how recently. an escalator works. It might make you never want to get on another escalator in your life. Who knows? Oh, I don't no. know. <laughs> inner workings of an escalator. <laughs> oh no. It's true, uh, you know, yeah, but there's yeah, so many definitely. podcasts out there, and I think it really just comes down to you have to really like the topic. You have to really love what you're doing. You know, a lot of people are starting these podcasts for business reasons or whatever, and that's totally fine, but, like, still to have a passion behind it is really mm -hmm. important. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So how can people join the podcast Brunch Club? Yeah, so um, podcastbrunchclub.com. And then there's like a, a list of our chapters. If you go to the top navigation, there's like in-person chapters and we have a little map that you can interact with or there's just the whole list of chapters and where we're at. And if we don't have a chapter where you are, we can always start one. I always help as much as I can from Chicago, but um, I've gotten it pretty much down to a science now that we've gotten, you know, 50 off the ground on five continents. So it's it's not too, too tough. It's, pretty much an easy thing to do so i would definitely wow. yeah recommend anybody who's interested just reaching out and just so you make it clear what would you say would be the main benefit so far of all the chapters why people say i'm so glad that they started their own club you know chapter yeah so i mean i think it's two things right i think it's just like part of it is podcast discovery if you're really if you really like podcasts this is a great way to just like kind of sample different podcasts every month and it's mm -hmm. not a huge list. It's like three to five episodes. No big deal for a month. It's not really that difficult. The other part of it, I think, is just like the human interaction side of it. I'm just like, I know for a fact that many people have made friends through Podcast Lunch Club. And so, mm -hmm. you know, again, as adults, it's harder to make friends with each other. And, you know, sometimes it's very loaded when you're going to like a networking thing where it feels very transactional or, you know whatever it just feels tough this is like podcast bench club it's like it's just an easy way to get together you have something that you already know you're going to talk about it's not like this weird awkward small talk sometimes that you see at mm -hmm. these gather like some gatherings but then inevitably the group will go off on a tangent and talk about whatever it could be podcast related or not podcast related it doesn't really matter it's just getting mm -hmm. people together and having a conversation you know very cool okay and uh, also, what would you say, since we did talk a little bit about the industry as a whole, what do you think is next? Like, what's the next podcast 2.0? Like, what do you think is going to be coming down the pipeline for this space? You mean in podcasting? Mm hmm In, in the podcast it's so world. You know? Yeah. It's so interesting because, like, there's a lot. I don't. I don't spend a whole lot of time on, like, the podcast industry side of the news, you know, like, mm -hmm. what's going on. But I know that recently there have been a lot of shakeups with some of these big podcast companies that were producing content and are no longer producing content. So, like, Panoply, mm. which was, like, an arm of Slate, um, 
was producing a ton of content, and they have just completely shut that down to focus on, like, advertising and stuff, probably because of the monetization thing. Um, and so it will be interesting to see what happens, just because there has been such a huge proliferation of podcasts in the world. Mm -hmm. And then with the, some of these really big, like BuzzFeed, I think, was another one that just came mm -hmm. out recently and said they're not going to be doing podcast content creation anymore. Um so I don't know what that means for the podcast and their network because they have hmm. a ton, right? Yeah. I'm sure I'm sure they'll still exist because they've been successful, but it might just mean a different production mechanism or whatever, some of the benefits they got out of being in a network. It'll just really be interesting how all everything will fall out with how, you know, some of these bigger news items that have come up in the, I would even say, I mean, today is, what, September 21st when we're talking, and the last week, even, just week or two, a lot of these news items have hit. So, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see. Yeah, absolutely. And I should actually mention, while we're talking about, like, the news cycle, that actually, there is a podcast brunch club got written up in Forbes, and I was interviewed mm -hmm. for a Forbes article and I think the title was something like, our book or our podcast club is the next book club. And obviously, mm. I think the answer is yes. But, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. But, yeah, it was really great to, to see because a lot of the stuff that's coming out, like a lot of the things that you see in the news are all about the podcast creators and less mm -hmm. about the podcast listeners. And so there's not a, there's a lot, so many community events for podcast creators because obviously podcast creating is also a very solitary experience and there's a lot of technical stuff to know and there's a lot of, you know, good that comes out of being part of a community like that. And mm -hmm. so like, there's also the other side of it, the podcast listener community, which I feel like that's what Podcast Bunch Club brings to the table. Gotcha. Absolutely. If you could give advice for newbie podcasters, what would you tell them? Hmm. <laughs> I, I guess that. I mean so like I guess I feel like I'm not the expert in creating podcasts. I'm probably more of the I wouldn't even call myself an expert, but like I know more about the listening side. So if I was if it was like a newbie podcast listener, I would say, Okay, go to, you know, Gimlet Media and look at their lineup of shows and see what speaks to you. Go to like This American Life, listen to The Moth, listen to Radio Lab. Those are like kind of the big hitters. And then, you know, decide on like certain niche areas that you're interested in, like whether it's marketing or, uh, you know, things like sort of the learning side of whatever you want to learn about and see what podcasts are out there. In terms of creation, I mean, I feel like my, my advice is really just like the same stuff as before. Like, be authentic. Mm -hmm. Make sure it's something that you really enjoy doing because it's a lot of work. You know, it's really a lot of work. You guys know. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. I mean, Definitely. and I think what's interesting is for anyone listening is the key is it's not even just the work. Just it doesn't just stop in just the product. Right. But it's distribution. Right. Are you where yeah. are you, where can people hear your podcast? Uh, what is your I, you talked about it a little bit before, but monetization, right? It's not just for the big guys. I think it's for anyone who's interested in monetizing. You know, what right. at what point are you ready to do that? What does that look like for you? Uh, what are you willing to invest in that? What's your social media mm -hmm. strategy with it? Uh, how exactly. are you curating your content? Do you want to have guests, right? So there's a lot of considerations, but I think you right. underestimate your, your knowledge because remember what you said was important, right? If you're consuming Assuming a lot of something, then you do have knowledge for how someone should create because you are their potential customer, right? So ultimately, True, yeah. I mean, it's the same thing. Why stores want to know why what the customer experience is going to be? That's that's going to dictate how the store gets changed, right? So I think right. that uh, we as consumers of media and content all have a role in how we can advise and tell, hey guys, I don't really like when you do X, Y, Z because I won't listen anymore, right? So. Right. <laughs> No, that's a really good point. That's a really good point. And, you know, it, it's it's one of those things where, though, I feel like saying that as an individual is really hard because I personally don't love some of the podcasts that are out there that are just, like, two friends, like, chit-chatting with each other. But I know <laughs> there's a huge contingent of people out there who love that. And yeah. So I don't want to, like, be here and say on the show, like, don't do that because – 
that's just, you might not get me as a listener, but that's okay. You might not want me as a listener. You mm-hmm. want to, you know, there's, there is an audience for most content. The problem is, is like, it's not just as simple as like you make it and they'll come, right? Like you said, yeah. there's, there's a huge burden on like, you know, distribution and social media strategy, strategy and letting people know you exist and, and just like all of that stuff that goes around it that is never ending. It's not just like I put it on an episode and then I have a million downloads, you know, it's, yeah. it's a lot of work. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I like certain things. I don't like certain things, but other people are bet- with like totally the opposite of me where they like the things I hate and I hate the things they love, you know? It's so mm-hmm. it's, it's hard. It's hard to say like, don't do this or do do that. I, I often don't like those listicles of like, here are the top 10 things you need to do if you want to have a successful mm-hmm. podcast. I kind of think like, no, break the rules. Like think outside the box and break the rules and see what happens. Play around with format. Mm-hmm. Do innovative things. Like, you know, think about what you're – talk to your audience and find out what they want to hear, you know? And, mm. and you know, I don't know. Don't always just follow the rules. Like, try to think creatively and break the rules. Do something different. So think outside the box, All right? Yeah, yeah. For, for sure. And Absolutely. also, I, I would say what I thought that you just said that was really interesting is – there's an audience for every different podcast. So I would say we just actually hit our first one year anniversary of uh, Woken Free. Oh, congrats. Thank you. Yeah. And, you know, we've gone, this will, you know, we've gone over 55 weeks of doing this, right? So ultimately I would say anyone who's starting out needs to understand, yes, it's a lot of work, but understand why they're doing what they're doing, right? Kind of like what you mentioned, don't just do this because you're looking for a million downloads or you're looking to, you know, like everyone has, everyone has their own different purpose for why they do it. But as long as, like you said, as long as you're authentic and genuine and you understand what, what this is doing for you, I think that mm-hmm. that, that would be just like things that I would say, Khalil, what would you say for someone who wants to start a podcast? Well, I would tell them, um, don't give up when you see that it's a lot harder than it's seen before, because I think a lot of people starting it, they don't really know how much work needs to be put into it mm-hmm. in terms of like editing the episodes, doing any prep mm-hmm. for the episode, if you're going to share like lots of information, mm-hmm. but I'd yeah. say putting in the hard work is definitely worth it. There's a, there's a payoff to it. Once you get the finished product, you can, Absolutely. it's something that'll be in existence yeah. forever, really. So yeah. it's, it's yeah. like something that you'll be able to show off to people and, Mm-hmm. Know, yeah. know that you're working on that you know I, it, it makes me think also like the other thing I would tell people is like try as much as you can to engage with the people that you're talking to like mm-hmm. I feel like that's going to be the thing that keeps you going because a lot of times podcasting is sitting in a dark room by yourself or <laughs> you know in a dark room by yourself talking to somebody on the phone that you don't actually like just right now we're doing right we're you know, not yeah. seeing each other we're not face to face yeah and like and so engaging with your listeners and getting the feedback and finding ways to really, I mean, I don't, I hate, I feel like engagement is such a buzzword, but like, I really think people need to think about that word and really mm-hmm. think about what that means. I almost feel like we need to come up with a different word so it's not quite bu- as buzzy, but like, I really feel like you have to find ways to interact authentically with your listeners, you know, ask them to email you. And tell mm-hmm. them you will email them back personally. And maybe even think about starting some sort of like, you know, audience advisory board where you're like, hey, you guys, like every, would you want to check in with me every six months just to let me know how you think things are going or where we we could go or where we could do better, or where we're doing great, you know, really think about mm-hmm. getting them involved because I think they want that. Interesting. That's very interesting advice. Okay. Yeah. I think that that that's very uh, very true, and I think we see that even in television, how they're constantly trying to yeah engage or connect with their audience. So you know, audio. If this is the new wave of media, how where media is going, I think that that is very much in line with what needs to be done, and it's most appropriate, right? We're we're putting out content for people to consume and engage with it. So then 
how can we better connect with you, right? And how can we better mm -hmm. make this experience more? It's all about the customer experience. Yeah, it's yeah. And sales. you know, there are, there are a couple podcasts that do a really good job of it. Like I don't know if you've ever heard that Sex and Money from um, WNYC. Mm -mm. It's a it's a podcast about that Sex and Money, mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's it's basically like let's talk about the things that we're too scared to talk about and sometimes she'll have like jane fonda as a guest and sometimes she'll just have like this lady from omaha as a guest or they could be like anything oh, yes. right? i have seen her thing yes yes, yes and a yes. sale yeah she's great and what she does which i think and i've actually started using this a little bit in my podcast is she gets people to like write in or call in and she uses those that feedback and she reads it on the podcast sometimes if there's like something that's really compelling or relevant and she'll if people like leave a voicemail message she'll be like we heard from so-and-so in new york city and they said and then she'll cut to the clip and she'll do the clip right and mm -hmm. so i always thought that was a really great way to engage audiences is just giving them a little bit of a voice on your podcast like giving them the opportunity to like weigh in on what you're talking about because a lot of times your audience are sometimes even more expert than you are or even your guests you know it's True. possible and True. so giving Absolutely. them that opportunity to like be on it for a second you know like or even be as a guest if they want to or if they are you know you, you know what you're looking for so for my podcast, like every month we do, we do interviews with the podcast creators, but we also do um, with the podcast creators that we feature, but we also do like what we call a roundup episode where we talk about the theme of the month. Like for example, this month's theme is ocean conservation. Next month it's going to be the sharing economy. Um, my co-host and I talk about it. And then we put out, we in advance put out a conversation starter question to the entire podcast brunch club community. So we say to them, okay, you know, in the next 10 days, if you have anything to share about ocean conservation, send me an audio, form, like, file, and, like, mm. I will put it on the podcast. And then we sort of do this little, like, montage of these audio clips that we get that of all these people answering the same question. You know, we ask one question, a very specific question, and we say, introduce yourself and answer the question. And that gives them a voice on the podcast because what I'm trying to build ultimately is a community of people and I want mm -hmm. people within the community to feel like they're actually a part of it. And so part of that is giving them a voice on the podcast, you know? You're so dope. we love you. You're <laughs> dope. You're so dope. Yes. Woken Free Nation. Thank She's you. dope. I love it. Yes, yes, yes. All right. So with that, we know that you're very busy and you have a million things to do. So if people want to get one minute of your time, if they want to get in touch with you, where do they go? So podcastbrunchclub.com. Um, at podcast brunch on Twitter, at podcast brunch on Instagram. You can email me. I respond to every single email I get. So it's Adela, that's A D E L A, at podcast brunch club dot com. And I will give you more than a minute of my time. So. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's I will very give you as much love. of my time as I can. Yeah. Aww, thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Adela, for sharing with the Woken Free Nation, the podcast Brunch Club. I think they're going to find it really helpful and Definitely. maybe even inspiring to mm -hmm. start their own podcast sometime in the future. And awesome. That'd be great. Yeah. We just we, we just like to thank you for sharing your story with the Woken Free Nation and, you know, We'll take some of the things you said to heart, too. Absolutely. We'll definitely apply and <laughs> think about how we can uh, well. apply that for Woken Free as well. Yeah. And just thank you so much for uh, sharing your story yeah, and just and advising everyone on, on the key to connecting with each other. And like you're saying, build a community. I think podcasts are more than just the audio that you put out. It's about the community you're building. So I think everyone should really take that to heart. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate this opportunity. Absolutely. We are at that time again. It is the coming to the end of our 57th episode of Woke and Free. I'm not even with you, Khalil. <laughs> this was quite the episode. Speaking with the founder of the podcast Brunch Club. As per usual, will I leave you guys hanging for what our next episode is going to be all about? On our next episode, we will be discussing... What is the real impact of video games? Make sure you follow us on social media to follow along in the conversation. And make sure you tune in next week for Woken Free Wednesday to join the conversation at 
WokeAndFree.com. If you are interested in being a guest on the show, like the founder of Podcast Brunch Club, then you guys know what you need to do. You need to go to WokeAndFree.com and submit a topic for an upcoming episode on our Contact Us page. And again, that is W-O-K-E-N-F-R-E-E.com. WokeAndFree.com, guys. And don't forget, if you want to holler at us on social media, slide into the DM. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at WokeAndFree. If you didn't already subscribe, please do share the episode and make sure you come back to join the conversation every Wednesday for Woken Free Wednesdays. Remember, Woken Free is more than a podcast. It is a way of life. Until next time.